Caution. I'm a hack. I learned everything I know from a guy leaned against a shade tree, having a drink, and smoking a cigarette. Hey, welcome back to Forsaken Steel. There's a lot of new subscribers, and I'd like to say welcome to everyone. Uh, and for all the people that haven't gotten caught up yet, uh, this is my 86 hour rock I've been working on for what seems like an eternity at this point. I LS swapped it, put a Phytec system on it. Uh, it's got a fresh 4L60 in it. Car wouldn't shift out of second gear. Um, I'm pretty sure I found the reason Phytec uh, sent, is sending me another wiring harness. We'll go through that in the next episode. But this episode, I was thrashing on this car, trying to get it ready for Power Tour this year, and I didn't make that. But I had uh, issues with the exhaust. I took it out to the exhaust shop. They put exhaust on it, uh, but it drags the ground. So we're going to address that. But one of the reasons it does that is because the cross member in this car hangs down and it's hard to go around for the exhaust, which is fine. I ordered us a new cross member. Uh, let me show you that and we'll get to work on this thing and see if we can't fix a few things today. Okay, so I'm under the car. This is a speed engineering true dual exhaust with an X pipe and actually connects right there. Sounds good. It's pretty loud though. But anyway, so when I took it out to the exhaust shop, had them install it, they couldn't get the speed engineering parts to fit around my BMR cross member. This cross member drops down, I don't know, like a couple of inches. And we have to run it because we have a relocation kit for the torque arm because this transmission is not out of an F body. So with that being said, it's just all in the way. But I purchased a Hooker Blackheart transmission cross member. We're, we're going to look at it here in a minute, but it has provisions. It's It tucks up in there a lot better. So that really should help us a lot. Uh, but we'll check it out in a minute. Uh, we'll have to cut this exhaust out. But look, it's, you know, five inches, four inches below the frame rail on this car. And these cars are low anyways. You can see. It drags everything. We've barely even driven this car, and both sides have been dragging. So I'm going to uh, get out, and we'll look at that cross member right quick that we're going to put in it. But I guess I'll just have to cut this out and figure it out. I am not an exhaust guy. Uh, I'm not even a great welder, but I bought some V-band clamps. Uh, they had welded all this in solid, and the problem with that is going to be that uh, you can't take it out if you need to service anything it's all just welded in so we'll get in here we'll get all this cut out i hope i have enough stainless steel material to actually fix this if not i'll have to figure out how to get some i don't even know I've, we'll figure that out together maybe but anyways I'll, let's look at that cross member right quick that i bought i'm back uh, just a second for you part finally came in and we've been waiting on it. i'm gonna show you what's up this is what we were waiting on more hookers. This is the bracket that goes on this mount to, to fit it up to the 4L60 that's in here. Uh, when you buy this, they don't tell you you need this, but you got to order it. And I, I didn't get it at first, but then I ordered it, and then it just took forever to get here. But uh, yeah, it's just a. Just a metal bracket. Got a part number on it there. So, bolt it down. It comes with bolts. Bolt that on. And uh, let's see if we can get this in here and see how much room we create for the exhaust now. Look at the good looking subframe connector there. That we get under here. Show you one more time. I can't remember if I did. I'm sure I did this cross member and why we're changing it see how wide the exhaust is in the back and it has to run out that wide because of the way this bracket's made so therefore they had to kick the exhaust out it drags whatever we're cutting it out first we're going to change this and just see how much more room we can gain just by putting this cross member in that has those reliefs for exhaust
take this torque arm loose first. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I turned you all off because it took me forever to get those four bolts out of the torque arm out, but they're out. Uh, we got tension on the transmission. Let's take that uh, bolt out right there. I think it's a 15. Right, there's a nut on top of it, of course it is. One I can't get to with that, so use a wrench. <laughs> That's interesting. bad boy there's the plate I built So, we got this bracket on there for it, but that's where the mount hits. <laughs> These parts are for this car, I thought, at least. What do I know? Maybe this thing's supposed to slide forwards more? I don't know that it can. Maybe it can. So it has a forward main, uh, mounting bolt up there on both sides, I think. It does on both sides. Maybe this turns around backwards. Is that how it goes? And this slides way up here? Is that how this thing goes? I don't know. It fits pretty well. Other than that, but if I do that, these are, that's, hmm. if I slide this up, the outer wings aren't going to match up to the, to the actual cross member where it bolts. That ain't going to work. What am I missing? This should have been a simple thing. Man, y'all ought to know, I can't do anything that's simple. If there's a way to, to find out it's messed up, I, I'm going to find it. But it can't go further up either because that's where the end of the... So this is our torque arm mount. And it's currently right there on the torque arm where it belongs. How does this go? How am I, how, am I, how do I have this so wrong? Is the motor and trans supposed to slide up that far? How could it? I've got it. I can't go up any further because... Well, sorry. But the uh, cross member and the bullpen are almost touching. So it can't go forward. 
Huh. Let me study on it. So, I took this part. It can't slide forward any further. This is how much room's different. Um, you can't get a bolt in there. It's too close. You couldn't run one in, even if you wanted to. Um, that bracket, it just, it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what, the, what I'm doing wrong. Um, yeah. Crazy. I thought this would be the easy part. <laughs> well, after screwing around with this thing for like, I don't know, I had like three hours of screwing around with it before I just kind of gave up on it. And I went to a uh, forum, Facebook page thing, whatever, and saw another guy had done this. So this is what I'm going to do. Turned it around backwards, bolted it in. That's the side that's supposed to go to the mount. We're going to turn it around backwards and then drill a couple of holes. I got one really started good. See how they don't line up? It don't matter. We're going to make our own holes. Um, this cross member is meant to go with the holly mounts and a holly pan, which sets the motor forward more, which would take care of all this problem, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. We're going to drill some holes and put it in. Um, I've got way too much time screwing around in a cross member. So uh, let's get these holes drilled and see if we can get it bolted up and sitting down on its you know, cross member and we'll look at the exhaust and see if we can do that. Uh, we may end up needing more exhaust. I don't know. We'll figure it out though. My goodness. My drill bits are shot. Let's see if that works. All right, I got it bolted in. Uh, it went really well. That's what it looks like. Everything is tight, so we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna let the jack down. We shouldn't see any real deflection or anything. There'll be some, but not a lot. All right. I think we're good to go. I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. So it ain't how they designed it but you know it's good enough let me get you one more shot here let's see there it is okay now that we got this pretty much bolted in by the way that bolt right there we jacked the transmission up higher now it actually sits a good deal higher uh, before I could get that bolt in and out, um, I can't get it in and out now because of the, the exhaust is actually so close to the floor or the frame rail of the car. So good thing we're changing this, but that bolt's not going to go in right now. But the uh, this cross member has a hole here and a hole here. And it comes with these plates that you slide in through the opening in the subframe like so and then i guess i'll just have to push it back there uh, i gotta drill these holes out and there's a little bit of gap right here and they say to use a black anodized washer uh, this is the only thing i could find that was black anodized in that bag and there ain't no way in the world that's gonna fit in there so i'm going to uh, drill that out and just use just a standard i have just some standard seven eighths washers or whatever they are and uh, we'll drill these holes out and see if we can't get that mounted. All right, so I got her in there, got her tightened up, and got the um, washers in there for spacers. Ran it in through the hole in the frame. I used this long um, screwdriver. I just pushed it back and uh, used the magnet that I had just to kind of walk it through the holes as it came back to here and then lined it up with a Phillips screwdriver, put a bolt in it, with those washers and it's good to go we'll do the other side hopefully it goes as well we'll see there we go i've had a terrible time trying to get this one this side in it's got to go uphill and i just don't want to do that so we're going to get creative 
I got a piece of Romex, which is just, that's the kind of wiring you put in the house, just in case you didn't know what Romex was, but I got a piece of copper wire out of it, which is helped me run a lot of other things in the past with this. So let's run it through the hole we want it to go through. Let's see if I can find it at the front. All right, so you gotta run side to side now. Let's see if I got a pair of pliers. I'm gonna make just a hook on this end. So, put a little hook on it. I'm gonna run a piece of string through it and just tie just a simple knot, just something to hold it, and then pull the string through. Like that. Now, see now we have a string on both sides, right? All right, now we're gonna take this plate, run the string through it. I probably have to cut that string back, it's unraveled. All right, like so. And we know when we pull that through, what direction we want it. So we want it to be like, this and then we're gonna take a washer this knot needs to be quite a bit better there we go tie as Leave as much string left out as you can. I'll show you why in just a minute. I get enough knot. Alright, grab this side. See now, that washer will not go through that bolt. This is going to take a little doing. It ain't going to just fall through there. But now we got something we can pull on, get it to go. We should be able to help it along with the screwdriver or whatever and get it up there. Just like that, now it's at the top. Now that it's past all that and it's at the top, I'm gonna put this other bolt back in. I took it out earlier, but with this method, I could have left it in. I fought with this thing for 30 minutes for you know, no reason, because I could have just done this. I knew how. I was just trying to be stubborn and do it the other way. Got that in there, it's all the way at the top. We should be able to get a magnet on that plate to hold it kind of still a little bit and pull that. All right, and there's the washer and the string. And this thing is way up in there. So we're going to use this just to push on a little bit to line it up so we can put the bolt in it. Let's find the bolt that goes to it.
Phillips screwdriver. You can do anything. Let's get it lined it up. It's real, real close. You should be able to start that bolt. There we go. Tighten the bolt down, you're done. Pull out the telescopic magnet. Here's how much room we've got clearing the uh, exhaust in the frame and whatnot. It ain't touching, but it is close. So um, it's tucked up so much tighter now. We may not drag as bad, but we still we still got to replace this exhaust. So hey, so there's one more major thing to do: set the pinion angle. I got us a digital angle finder. Uh, so what you're actually when you're setting up the pinion angle you're actually setting it to the center line of the crank not the output shaft or whatever so what you got to do is actually put this on the crank bolt or the harmonic balancer but this one will, should fit right on the crank bolt um, it's digital and we can just hold the hold button and it'll tell us exactly what it is we're going to set it at negative two degrees for the pinion angle in the rear and with a negative two degree pinion angle as the rear end flexes up, you come closer to getting to, you know, a positive one or two degrees, which is still plenty to spin the uh, U-joints in the cups and all that and do all the stuff it's supposed to do. Uh, that's all the research I could find. So, you know, seems like a fair, all the, you know, big shops are doing it this way. And it got to be good enough for us. So let's get to it and uh, I'll show you what I've got. Well, I forgot. This thing has the aftermarket uh, pulleys on it, so we'll have to do it off the uh, harmonic balancer itself. No big deal. We'll just go ahead and turn this thing on. There we go. Uh, oh, it won't fit in there. All right, so here's what I came up with. Let me show you. I have a piece of quarter inch steel. It's what I was using before uh, in the back for that uh, plate. I should be able to sit that against the harmonic balancer and then get our uh, degrees off of that. Should be should be perfectly fine. All right, we're on the passenger side. Just there's less stuff over here, so I'm going to put the plate on, hold it. Now we're going to put the angle finder on up against that. And press the hold button. 3.60. So if we want to be two less, that'll be 1.60 on the rear. All right, so got the digital angle finder. We're going to put it right on the arm itself. <laughs> Look at that. It is zero. So, I already know that I don't have any more adjustment in this. Uh, this is not a, an adjustable arm. I just wanted to check, see where it was at. And, uh, yeah, it's at zero. So, really, we're three and a half. Sorry about all that movement. We're three and a half degrees down, which really and truly should be fine. Um, if we do, start doing drag racing events and things like that, we might want to dial it in some more so i may later way down the road like uh you know six months eight months from now i may get an adjustable torque arm for it so we can dial that in but i think we're we should be fine with what we got and let me show you why there's very little adjustment in wh what we have but i wanted to make sure we were as close as we could be so the rear torque arm itself has some adjustability in it but there's only uh, where the bolts go through. It's slotted at the bottom. And I think there's three sets of holes at the top. And we're in the bottom hole, so we can't go down any further. Uh, I know I can't really show you that, but that's where we're at. So I know we're really, really close there. I'm just going to go ahead and lock it down. I just wanted to see what set of holes was the best. The bottom for us in this situation is the best. I got her bolted down. I went ahead and rechecked the rear end because I knew it would tighten it up some. And it checks at 0.3 now 
Uh, so that puts us, what, 3.3 uh, negative. So, yeah, that should be just fine. Not, not that we can do anything else about it anyways, but I just, I really just wanted to know what hole we needed to be in. So, or to get it close. So, the exhaust, I got this piece out and the other piece, and, I, and I've put them up in here to the best of my ability. I don't know, I probably can't do this with one hand. Anyways, long story short, uh, it, they cut too much off of both of these to and too much off the headers for what I've got to work. So I'm going to have to order some more pipe, uh, some more stainless pipe, because I'm going to try to fix it here. And yeah, we'll go from there. I, that should be fine for now. We'll just keep moving on. Uh, we're dragging, but at least now we can just fix the exhaust and we can move on. Look at all the room for activities back here for exhaust. Much happier with that. There you have it. Um, we got the Hooker Blackheart transmission cross member in there. They say basically it's supposed to work with their kit only or whatever. We got it. It's working, whatever. It'll be fine. Just know that you, you're not going to bolt it just straight in unless you have their oil pan and their mounts. You, they, there are other mounts you can use, blah, blah, blah. It, it's fine. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.